بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to the sixth episode of our short series about أمهات المؤمنين the mothers of the believers through this series inshallah I want to take you on a journey through time to learn about the mothers of the believers and so we become the best human beings, citizens of this earth, fathers, mothers, children, neighbors, colleagues and students that we can be. In this episode, I will discuss the Quranic framework on how to change a wrong custom that is well established in a society based on the example of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family. As mentioned in the Ayah 35 in Surah Al-Ahzab, the believing men and the believing women chose Allah and his messengers and surrendered to their creator, accepting Islam as a code of life for themselves. The next Ayah in Surah Al-Ahzab, Surah Ayah 36, puts all of us to the test to find out how truthful, strong, and effective our faith Iman is. It is telling us that we should surrender and submit as Muslims to Allah, meaning we trust Allah's command, follow them, and apply them in our lives, and know in our hearts and minds that this is the best choice for us in every aspect of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ahzab, Ayah 36 said, It is not for a believing man or a believing woman when Allah and his messengers have decided a matter that they should thereafter have any choice about that matter. And whoever disobeys Allah and his messenger has certainly strayed into clear error. Let's reflect on this ayah here. How many times has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us to the test concerning socio-cultural situations that contradict Allah's command? How did we react in that situation? Did we surrender to Allah's command or did we keep maneuvering and posing our opinion? The Quran presents a framework on how to change a wrong custom that is well established in a society and challenge the status quo successfully. First, in order to exemplify the accurate way for changing a wrong custom or tradition, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designates the prophets and messengers to take the lead. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins Surah Al-Ahzab calling Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him O Prophet, remain conscious of God and do not yield to those who deny the truth and hypocrites. Allah is all-knowing and all-wise. And follow that which is revealed to you from your sustainer, for Allah is truly aware of all that you do. This is in in Ayah 1 and 2 in Surah Al-Ahzab. Later, in Surah Al-Ahzab, the Ayah 38 and 39, Allah explains this, uh, the way, explain the, Allah's way in practice with all the prophets before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and said, there is not to be upon the Prophet any discomfort concerning that which Allah has imposed upon him. This is Allah's established way with those prophets who have passed on before. And remember that Allah's command must be fulfilled. And such command always be his way with those who convey Allah's messages to the world and stand in awe of him and hold none but Allah in awe. Allah is sufficient to take account. In the case of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family, they took the lead 
in changing one of the well-established Arf custom since the ancient world to this day, which is a tabani adoption. At that time in pre-Islamic Arabia, when fami family relations were loose, there was no significant differences between natural and adopted children of the tribe, and they shared the same revenues and liabilities. Therefore, from the beginning of Surah Al-Ahzab and in Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah number 2, and in Surah An-Nisa, Surah number 4, we can see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized the significance of the family as the cornerstone of society based on a true and natural foundation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself defines the structure of the family relations as related to one another through blood ties and marital relations. These relationships entail mutual expectations that are prescribed by the Quran, enforced by the law, and internalized by the individuals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not leave these relationships to people to determine the, the relations as the case of Dihar, for example, in Surah 58, Surah Al-Mujadila, from 2 to 4. A woman does not become a man's mother just because he has called her his mother or compared her to his mother. Allah says, they are not their mothers. Their mothers are no others than those who gave them birth. And it is the same applied for the adopted children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in, to us in Surah Al-Ahzab, Ayah 4, Allah has never put two hearts within one person's body, and he has not made your wives who you declared unlawfully your mothers, and he has not made your adopted sons your true sons. That is merely your saying by your mouths. But Allah says the truth, and he guides to the right way. Call them by the names of their fathers. It is more just in the sight of Allah. But if you don't know their fathers, then they are still your brethren in faith and those entrusted to you. And there is no blame upon you for that in which you have erred, but only for what your hearts intended. And ever is Allah forgiving and merciful. In this case, Surah Al-Ahzab came to emphasize that every individual has natural right to lineage and social placement. It is obligation of the individuals to identify themselves with their true lineage and it is the responsibility of all those around them to implement it. If his or her lineage is unknown, the individual must be identified as the brother and the sister and a friend of the fellow Muslims. This suffices to give them the necessary identity and to assure them of a legitimate place in society. Therefore, the Prophet and his family were put to a big test in order to bring this new change to the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the intensity of the situation of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, in Surah Al-Ahzab in Ayah 37. And he said, And remember, O Muhammad, when you said to the one on whom Allah bestowed favor, and you bestowed favor. Keep your wife and remain conscious of Allah, while you concealed within yourself that which Allah was about to bring to light. And you were, you were afraid of what people might think. 
while Allah has more right that you fear him. So when Zayd had come to the end of his union with his wife, we gave her to you in marriage so that in the future no blame should fall upon the believers for marrying the spouses of their adopted children when the latter have come to end of their union. And ever is the commandment of Allah must be fulfilled. The story began when both Zayd and Zainab bin Tujash agreed to get married in obedience to Allah and his messenger's command. But Zainab could not overcome her feeling that Zayd was incompatible with her in regards to status and her status. This feeling she, this feeling she had caused more and more bitterness between them. Zayd made repeated complaints to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. At that time, Allah had indicated hinted to his prophet, peace be upon him, that when Zayd had divorced his wife, the prophet would have to marry Zainab. That's what Allah refers to in the ayah 37, when he said, while you concealed within yourself that which Allah was about to bring to light. Because the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, kept telling Zayd, Keep your wife and remain conscious of Allah. And then Zayd finally told the Prophet, peace be upon him, that he intended to divorce her. Here you can imagine how difficult and stressful that time was for Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. At the same time, his enemies started spreading rumors and lies and false stories against him. In addition, marrying his adopted son's divorced wife was unacceptable in that society. But Allah intended to bring a great reform through this marriage of the Prophet. The words when Allah says, and you were afraid of what people might think while Allah has more right that you should fear him, clearly pointed to that same theme. These words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly indicate that Allah accomplished this social reform through the Prophet, peace be upon him, to bring a great change with injustice, which could not be enforced by any other means. There was no way to put an end to the wrong customs that had become prevalent in Arabia in respect to the adopted relations. So Allah, his messenger himself, took initiative to abolish them. Therefore, Allah arranged this marriage not for the sake of adding a wife to the Prophet's peace be upon him household, but for enforcing an important social change and bring justice. Imam al-Bukhari, may Allah have mercy on him, recorded that Anas bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, said that Umm al-Mu'mineen Zainab bin Tujahsh may Allah be pleased with her, used to boast, boast to the other wives of the Prophet, saying, Your families arranged your marriages, but Allah arranged my marriage from above the seven heavens. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, love, compassion, and care for Zayd continued and in fact increased in every aspect. Indeed, the houses of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, were full of orphans who were under his care, kafala. The prohibition of adoption was part of the general legislation of the Quran, much of which was declared a year earlier and collected in Surah An-Nisa, Surah number 4. 
The basic aim of this early Medinian legislation was to foster cohesion and, and mutual material support in the Muslim community, to aid orphans and the poor, and to provide the best support for women. Such social justice and material welfare was primary to be achieved by the existing traditional kinship groups based on blood relations who were responsible for the well-being of their members. At the same time, the Quran emphasizes the responsibility of the community to make sure that no one is left without proper care and love. It is the responsibility of the community to create the best systems and organizations to take care and provide the best services for all its members, especially the orphans. In this context, while it is clear the meaning and structure of adoption in the modern American and Western societies is similar to the pre-Islamic Arabia custom, which is why it was prohibited. However, foster care and guardianship are the alternative and accepted systems for Muslims in America and the Western society. Muslims should take care and should take the lead in strengthening and improving the foster care systems and guardianship in every aspect in America and Western societies. I will leave you with the following questions. What did you learn from this prophetic experience? And do you remember a time that you were put to the test by changing a custom or challenging the status quo? What was your reaction? Please stay tuned to the next episode. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.